then at Cards Basement it was three to two. So if that pattern holds true, I I think a lot of us can share the same sentiment as well that this isn't the same anathema. This is a very different anathema who is kind of found what works. Uh, we've been we were waiting for this for a long time. Anathema showed up early on back at Riptide and kind of had incredible performances, letting everybody know like, hey, I'm here. This is one of the best rocks to look out for. And then kind of disappeared for a little bit and then came back and had that amazing performance at Rising Grind, consistently kept doing that at other majors, and now here in top eight, trying to get that much further. They are, they are one of the biggest threats to deal with, period. Specifically, not just because they're so good at boxing, but we mentioned it yesterday, and it was the closing factor to the match. They are probably the best Rob, at least NA-wise, at getting zero to deaths with Gyro. And it, with Fatality, Captain Falcon has so many routes to mix up that recovery. You're going to get caught by near Gyro at some point. Right. Captain Falcon, some of the best drift in Smash Brothers Ultimate, where they can you know, do that, that, that fade back thing with the Falcon dive where they go up and then they drift back and then you think that they're going to miss the ledge and then they drift back in and still connect to it. And it's, it's just so tricky to deal with and that's combined with one of the fastest punish games in the entire game, one of the toughest neutrals to deal with in the entire game where they're just sprinting at you, grabbing your shield or landing on you with a dare or a nair one and it, everything feels like it's happening all at once and it's so, so terrifying. Something I was enjoying a lot watching Sean do yesterday was walking. Uh, he was actually making sure that he would walk around to instantly react to what people did because of that burst range. Also, it doesn't put you in initial dash, so you don't have to worry about having to get the sh uh, shield up faster as you're rushing up so you're getting smacked away because sometimes that'll happen to people. You rush up right into Rob or something like that. Down tilt. Congratulations, idiot. But now you got to get pushed back. And uh, it just feels like that sometimes. It feels, so, it feels so silly for running right at it. But then you have tactics like that. And I know that Fatality is a absolute lab monster. He will look into these types of things too to try and figure it out. And I know for a fact he has insane gyro combos as well. So right. Anathema's gonna need to be very careful about when those are left alone. And that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up from the last couple of times I've seen these two face off is it, it almost feels like uh, certain characters and especially certain players are better with Rob's gyro than Rob is. Like, sure, <laughs> yeah. Rob has those, like, the, the nair zero to death into the side B, but if you've seen some of the stuff that I've seen Griffin do with a Rob gyro, you would not I, be able to sleep at night. I'm looking specifically at Mars' Captain Falcon. <laughs> Actually, he pulls off some ridiculous stuff, but right now it is Fatality who is out here already pushing to the ledge. That sure hop neutral air, by the way, has become a tremendous tactic for them. They're realizing that A, it's very fast, B, it has next to no landing lag. So they're using it from ledge more, they're using it to get out of disadvantage quicker, and uh, trying to keep presenting, uh, keep that pressure up. Right now it's all on Anathema who's forced them to go low. Luffy does snag him underneath the side B though. Yeah, manages to get past one of Rob most potent kill tools, but he's 93% the worst for wear. And you were talking about short hop Nair, and Athma already kind of showing it off there for Rob. But Fatality actually gets Phantom Footstooled there uh, in what might have been a death combo. Yeah, that was uh, huge for them, but they're going to get down throw. Not going to air dodge back down into it. It doesn't matter, though. That up smash has very minimal end lag to it. Will you get the read, though? Does not get the read. Good matchup from Fatality. And that jab actually finishing the gentleman on shield. And Atma maybe trying to parry it to Ooh. get a punish. But instead, ends up losing their first stock game. Here they are. They already got the backup in the crowd. That was also very, very smart from Fatality because a lot of the time, some, some like amateur level Captain Falcons or other characters will try and go off stage and dare Rob in that position. But they don't realize that Rob up air very disjointed and will be able to win out but so is the down air too and it catches fatality below the ledge for the first stock as well only 19% extra credit found by oh, him uh -oh. and he might be losing his stock here oh. if he's not careful that but he barely manages to drift back to the ledge that option coverage was so good using the jow tossing it up to get the two frame window to potentially get him afterwards keep him covered because you have to go back on with that up no matter what but that drift like you're saying before Ooh. immaculate drift falcon kick out of disadvantage not something you do all the time, but will trip him up every once in a while. Has the gyro in hand, just jumping slightly outside of the burst range of Anathema's Rob, but gets caught by the raw pair. Put it ledge once again, and this is where Anathema makes a lot of his money. Finds the up tilt up air, and that is another stock in the Rob's favor. Like to go right back to that last ledge trap in the same exact situation. Option coverage, the mini game. It is so hard to get around Rob. Doesn't matter though when the KO potential is on your side, and Jordan has got your back. They're getting loud, they're getting him excited. Try and keep him in the game because Fatality does absolutely have the opportunity to take game one if he does not get pushed to the ledge the same way he was before. And he actually had Anathema at the ledge 
ledge for a little bit there, but the roll on stage does not get covered by Fatality. But what does Ooh. get covered by Fatality is literally everything else on that platform. There is no escape for Anathema as he has to go low to recover back. Oh, Dare? A oh. little bit too far away, but one Nair, one possibly could lead to that end. Gyro's on deck, gonna go ahead and send it back on stage. Just the gyro down at the ledge, gonna catch him. No, doesn't get it. Good tech coming in from Anathema, still giving himself around. The trade off is not gonna be enough just yet. It's not quite there for Fatality, but he's gotten himself such a huge lead. It would have to be a near zero to death from Anathema to be able to close this out. And it's not going to come to pass as the raw dash attack gets Anathema going in and he immediately spins that finger. Run it back, baby. One more. You see the immediate head now too. It's like, yeah, I got this. I got this. And he did at the end. But I, you pointed out to the very looming darkness that is Anathema's Rob when at the end there. Zero to death potential. We mentioned it at the start and it's always something you have to think about. Anathema can absolutely take you out at zero to 30-ish range without even trying most of the time. So you have to be very careful. Of course, using that dash attack, very smart. If they try to jump, you hit them. They try to trade, you hit them. If any trade is in your favor at that low of a percent. And because of that, Fatality sports the first win. Fatality, though, making great use of that tempo control, especially towards the end of that game, to just say, I know you're searching for the opportunity to pull Gyro so that you're even capable of the zero to death. So I'm going to smother you. I'm going to run straight into your face. I'm going to get in there and not give you the chance to do anything. And doing the same thing there on ledge, just the high Falcon dive to get up there. Anathema looking for this first stock already. I swear, watching Anathema's frame chats makes you feel like nothing you do is correct sometimes. It's a checkmate, it, for it was sure. All, it's a, a shout out to his sponsor, Checkmate Esports, because that's all he does with those enough. frame also traps. Also to the friend of Mutes, because Mutes is the same thing. And uh, they, of course, those two have a lot of practice history with each other. And a uh, big part of why Anathema definitely has gone a bit more to a patient play style of late. You can't do that, though, against Fatality. But they have even the damage up, essentially. Rising Bear on a disadvantage going to help him at least for a moment. Moment, not before they get kicked in the face. The boots to the jaw, or at least whatever Rob has that passes for a jaw, but he's <laughs> got something, something else alongside those, and that is those spinny, spinny arms to take out that second stock from Fatality and keep us almost perfectly even. And now, here comes the damage. Gonna go ahead, actually smart going in away from that because that bear is meant to force you to air dodge to the left so you can continue to pressure him, get a free grab. Jab's gonna get him out, good job getting up immediately, not taking that laser, doesn't matter though. This damage is building up fast. Gyro does get broken up by the shield. I think he really wanted to get that gyro so he could find a, another way to approach. It's going to be a down throw, looking for the up tilt up air. And your mash ain't fast enough to get out of it for Anathema, but it is good enough to DI through it twice. Not once, but twice, and he survives the dare. And still held out to the jump that entire time. You are a madman. I cannot believe you're still in, in this right now. In what universe does Fatality live through that? And the Nair, He's he a, is still alive. 174 against Rob, and now the grabs are becoming obvious. The fair out of disadvantage backs him off. What does it have to do? Trying to go for an F-tilt at this point, hoping Gyro was still oh, gonna be there. Oh, there it is, up, up throw. throw, yeah. Just do it, there you go. He <laughs> wanted to stare him in the eyes. <laughs> he wanted him to know like you, the face of the man. You finally caught the mouth that got into the house like, I got you, I got you. Tom now get finally out. catches Jerry. Now what do you do to try and back up Fatality from this point forward though, last though? Because uh, Fatality's been able to answer right back each time. Revenge KOs have been there each time. And basically the big thing is just hoping the that you keep the ledge. The, the thing though is that all of these revenge KOs from either Fatality or Anathema have all come because the stocks have been taken while both characters are at high percent. Anathema started out this Fatality stock at about 70, so he's got so much more room to play with. And what does Anathema love more than space, making use of every single bit of it afforded to him right now? It's the Falcon Dive that puts him off, but not nearly out. A very high recovery right there. F throw go. should do it here. No oh, matches no out. Match out. We're getting close to the point that up throw will take about two on a DI mix up. So you just need to make sure that you guess correctly to figure out how you get out from ledge. Looking for that to grab right now. Back throw. Not going to be able to do it either. But now I'm pretty sure at this point up throw Ooh. should finish it. Good Z catch by an Asthma there on the gyro too. But finally. The Nair does the job, takes him out, but Fatality has to find a way off this platform. He's getting sharked so ridiculously hard. Takes well, away, and this could turn into so much more, but Anathema is able to Nair through oh. and finds the Zombear for the stock and evens us up 1-1. I think he was expecting something else. That or tried to parry it maybe in the last second so he could go in and get a punish because you don't want to let him fade away. You want to try to get that grab, send him back over to the ledge. It's not. The, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen Fatality make a comeback like that. Right, and a, a more aggressive player would have gotten caught by that too. Anathema 
only survived through that despite being at 0% because he recognized how dangerous that situation was against Fatality, knowing that he needed to, okay, play the safe game, wait for Griffin to commit, and then punish instead of trying to go in head-to-head -head, even though you had the percent lead. Yeah, and this is just going to be a, oh, wow, never mind. I was going to say. No, these two well, love their counter picks. Well, most of what I was going to say is the pacing of what we saw just before that was going to be kind of a theme of what we see for the set. Wow. That is now going to change because Fatality just gets the fourth yes. the edge run, gets the reversal up. Let's get the no back there. He does. It's not enough. Can he finish it by chopping up, getting that nair? No. He tries to go out there again. Anathema somehow sneaks the way back on, but took 94% along the way. I don't care who it was. Somebody should have died there, and both of them made it back. Fatality going to find the stomp knee. A shout out to Melee that we saw before. Incredible job for Fatality. Keeping composed, making sure that that ledge shot that was should have been done did not go away. Now trying to continue to get that pressure on. Not respecting these nares though. And that's multiple free fares because of that platform being right in the way. Up there too, this damage is racking up fast. Fatality not giving Anathema a single moment to calm down, to, to compose himself after that Melee, that scramble off stage in the first stock. And it's very much working out for him. 69% already built up. The Gentleman Jab will bring us to 79. He's looking for another offstage interaction, and that is the benefit of Smashville. Captain Falcon so dang fast that he can control this entire stage with his movement alone. Like I said, essentially one Nair equals a ledge trap, it's, and you are stuck there as Rob, but Rob does have Captain Falcon over there too, gonna force him to go low, gets around the follow-up, and looks for a Nair to try and get the buffered option back on, but that time, Fatality seeing through the back air did not see through the up air to follow up time though, and that's gonna finally get Anathema on the board. The first time too that Anathema was able to connect that rising up air on Fatality, hiding out on that ledge, and I think that is another uh, maybe unfortunate uh, part of counterpicking to Smashville. The, the stage is so thin that Rob is going to be able to just stick his arm straight through it when maybe he shouldn't be able to or won't be able to on a stage like PS2. Yeah, no, not at all. And China might get his head. Um, Fatality's aggressive play at a disadvantage might cost them as he almost gets knocked out right there. Gonna be forced to use Ooh. jump up on for the side B. Very smart mix up. And at least going into center across there gives you the most likelihood that you're either A getting back down, you're still alive, or B, you take that bear, still alive. Fatality holding on to this one and finds a way to strike back, not letting that big lead go away because Anathema was starting to even it up. Early grab, down throw, Nair, up air, and looking for Anathema to try and fast fall to find a reversal. Many a person has been caught by that mix-up, but not Anathema, not today. He's going to be able to even up the stocks instead. Brings Fatality all the way to 35. Oh, no. He's getting caught, but Fatality able to live through. Immaculate patience from Fatality as well, because if you jump into that gyro, you're getting sent right back into Anathema, who is still active with that side B. And able to get back on the stage, Anathema trying to find that landing. Nair does find Finally find it. We all know it's coming, but eventually it's gonna hit. And that damage is still building for Fatality right now. The damage on this stock has been almost exclusively up air. It's just been up air, up air, land, up air, up air, land. Fair's coming through from Anathema though. And almost Ooh. finding a bear there too, but goes for the side B and this could make him pay for it, but Fatality goes for the rapid jab instead. I believe a miss input because there's, I don't know what he wanted otherwise. Well, I mean, luckily for him, he also went for the instant rise. Did not get the grab. You see the look on Anathema's face. They wanted to get a proper punish. Yesterday, they had the same situation where they dropped the side B, but they didn't let it go. Up throw will not be enough. So you have to go for the up smash instead on the read. And that's going to be Anathema pushing themselves up 2-1. What a great read from Anathema. And a great clutch at that as well. It seemed to be all in Fatality's favor, but you heard it. I heard it. Everybody heard it. The moment Anathema found that gyro toss at zero, started getting those Z catches, it was, no, 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 get me out! And Fatality, despite managing to escape, ended up losing his life to the down throw regardless. By the way, real quick, just as a uh, uh, breaking of the fourth wall moment, shout out to whoever it is out there who was putting that Pikachu up in disguise over on the Georgia side there, I see you. Well, we're gonna get into the next game. We have a continuation of a return to Smashville. 2-1 in favor of Anathema right now. Fatality made that extremely close. It wasn't that far off. But Anathema still able to clutch it out. You have to make sure that you don't let those big leads like you had on stock two, where it took all the way to 160, happen again. Well, and let's not even talk about the, the mistake that happened after Anathema's whiffed side B, where Fatality ended up with Rapid Jab. It could have gone for any number of options and probably wanted any number of options, but 
going to be moving straight past that here. Looking for the edge guard, but the rising up air keeps Anathema safe. These spares have been really good out of this. Audio. That is a knee for set though, and that's gonna give him the first stock. Fatality looking very similar to that last game. Last gotta find a way to replicate that success and not let it be like last time where uh, Anathema brought it all the way back. Great mash from Fatality too to get out of that down throw at this high-ish percent. Up air, not going to be enough to do it, but Anathema very nearly meeting that Falcon kick head-to-head -head with the Nair. All Fatality the starting to cook here with these jump reads and air dodge reads. Yeah, we were talking about those frame traps from Anathema earlier, and now it's actually Fatality is doing the same thing. Are we going to go for an attempt on a dare? Yes, we are! It's uh, the big part of why I expected the drop off was before that. Every interaction was always a dare at ledge. Let there the trades go, go off, though. and it's still building up. Fatality finally being stopped in his tracks, if only for but a moment, by this gyro play from Anathem, but he's still able to get back on stage. Looks for the jab one, two, and it's down smash to take the first stock. All right, well, this is where Anathema steals games. You have to respect Gyro Nair, and here it is. Gyro into ah! drop down, tried to get the reverse. That could have potentially led to exactly what you would all fear. And he comes through, frame traps, gets the down air before he gets the stage, and we get that game five. Our first set was a 3-0, and I think Griffin and Steven felt we were a little bit deprived of that tension and those stakes as we head in to Anathema's counterpick in the final game of the set, and potentially, well, not even potentially, one of these two final game of the tournament. Loser side of bracket. Two qualifying spots for the Panda Cup Finals on the line. $10,000 pop bonus on the line. Regional battle going on here. There is a lot riding on this game five to not fall in this position and that's what makes it so beautiful because it's going to be that much more difficult to stay composed in this game however yesterday and that's my had a game five in a very similar situation and well, we not. saw how that went so <laughs> we'll see if fatality can prevent that from happening because he's definitely looking very confident after that game four gonna be going into game number five all of it's on the line Captain Falcon versus Rob, neither of these players gonna be going to anything else other than small battlefield. The final counter pick of this set. Asthma trying to, to keep Griffin in on those close quarters where Rob can just smother using gyro and frame data. Yeah, but Captain Falcon has that in spades too. Definitely. Oh, and speaking of which, uh, you know, that's what has been hit yet. However, this can be fatal. Oh, no go! way! Side B! That's a lot of Jeff Williams trying to go for the Nair. He does get back on, but Fatality making an excellent attempt to try and steal that one. It certainly wasn't going to be the stock at 0%, but Fatality very, very close to converting it into one regardless. And Anathema kind of thanking his lucky stars that Fatality didn't find what he was looking for. I like that falling up here too. Even though it's not really going to lead to much, it at least gets Fatality to have to recover away from you. Get to hold that shield, get a free grab. Yes, you do. And do we build it up much further? Can't really fast fall down back to the platform to find a follow-up knee, but try to buy for stage control. And he does! Doesn't get the knee though! Sour spot ruining the plans of Fatality Falcon and a down throw might do that even further, but it's not the entire uh, series of hits that up air offers. I like also how Anathema covered multiple options while keeping it safe. That will still lead to the kill right there, but Anathema going for Nair instead of trying to go for that dare, which Fatality played around, would have allowed the Fatality center stage control for free. Throws that gyro up high, trying to cover himself on the ledge, and Fatality is going to seed it to him gets off and just takes that position underneath platform where he knows he's much safer from a lot of the landing options that Rob has at his disposal and beats out the rising up beat with a grab of his own. And the stress factor starting to settle into, it's being much more difficult to find Anathema. Anathema playing perfectly right now, gets the jab lock, gets big damage, starting to build up this lead heavy, forcing him to go low. He goes above though to snatch it to not let that happen. However, this is a potential punish. Up smash won't be enough just yet. He didn't have the opportunity to charge it knowing that the, the end lag on that move is only so much and Fatality would be able to recover quicker than that. Off stage now once again, but just struggling so hard to take this stock. This is the, the anathema of old, the anathema of myth and legend. The one that holds on to his stocks for longer than anybody else could even imagine. 167 against the Falcon that has been so proficient in taking them away previously. And it's exactly what we've been uh, just kind of looking at with this thing, the new rise once again to Anathema's play is that they've gotten so much better at not throwing up a lead here. as they now build this lead up to two stocks. Fatality has made comebacks from this before. However, it's not hard for us to say that this is an extremely difficult mountain to climb from this point forward. And this is exactly what happened with Anathema's Game 5 yesterday. A, a struggle of four games leading into it, and then Game 5, it seemed that 
download complete. Beep, boop, bop. The robot is ready to go. 182 on him, and Fatality still can't find anything. Yeah, you better oh, no! Ooh, if that near connected, that might have led to the end, but he's getting back on stage somehow. He needs to find a straight hit back air or something, but the anti-air game from Anathema is coming through, preventing any single wing condition he could find. Gets hit out of the nair, too. It's climbing so fast, so out of favor. That won't be enough just yet. At risk of a commentator's curse, are we about to see a three-stock in game five as Anathema connects with the rotor arm, sends him deep off stage, but it's still living. No, that is it! Fatality out at seventh place, and Anathema going to be moving on, continuing to rep Southern Florida. Anathema refusing to let this end now. Anathema has had multiple game fives in a row against some of Georgia's best, what was still able to make that last game look dominant. It was incredibly <laughs> impressive. Big lead, nothing could be answered at that point. anti ears were on point, ledge trap was on point. That is the type of player we expect to make it to grand finals the way that they were playing. If they could replicate that game five, throughout all of the other games. That's the first seed of the tournament right now. That is the person who we expect to be taking that, the, the lion's share of the $10,000 and the Panda Cup spot. A three stock against Fatality, a, a player like we mentioned earlier who is 2-0 on him, who had that winning record, who has the, the winning matchup that most people would consider and has the confidence against that character. None of it mattered in that game five. Just Anathema oh. came through and said, I understand. Yeah. This is how you play this, and this is how I'm going to play this. 189 on that third stock as well. Just unkillable. Hey, sometimes matchup history at other events, even though it's always good to get those games in, when it matters the most on the big stage, with a lot on the line, it matters who walks away at that point. And Anathema taking that history from before, putting a, you know, a W in the win column finally, uh, in that set history, but this one being a very important one as that has now removed Fatality from the picture of trying to get that Panda Cup spot at least here before the LCQ at the championships that'll be happening, of course, December 15th weekend. If you